good day to you, ladies and gentlemen. WoW Classic is to be shut down in the next day or so, and it has given us a nice refresher, a nice open mind, a nice look, a nice reality check in many ways as to how the game played back then. And also opened our eyes as to Blizzard's thought process on it with what they said at BlizzCon, which is they really don't expect many people to make it past the first, like, 20 levels. They don't expect that to happen because they're going to get a big, hard slap in the face as to what Classic was like. Very different from BFA, very different experience, very different classes. The classes you know and love of today and maybe have grown with over the last nine eight seven six years going all the way back to the beginning are super different they're some of them are woefully underdeveloped but that's what people want that's what they're after that's what they're after part of the experience about the flavor of vanilla and also that gives us an idea as to what can you choose class wise uh, to make it past that nightmare barrier that's what we're after what can we choose to do that so i've been leveling and playing around with every single class and spec on classic to see what exactly it was like so i've got it straight in my head even as somebody who makes legacy videos looking back at all the history of the classes playing them and actually physically being there because i did avoid the private service for that stuff uh is a big eye opener for me as well uh so let's go through this then so i have decided that yes on classic i will go with the warrior which is one of the more notoriously bad leveling experiences and it is pretty grim there is no doubt about it blizzard were very clever in giving us westfall barons uh because that's when this sort of hump arrives where the leveling slows down it becomes a lot of grinding a lot of wow leveling in the early days was just grinding mobs for experience with a few quests kind of pointing you in various directions that's generally how it's going to work out and it's a slow process very very slow process but it is also uh complemented by the talent tree system which i was very glad to see return because each level and each marker you get over gives you something extra it might just be a little bit of extra critical strike there's no doubt about that it might be a really good talent it might be something that chains onto something much better later that opens up doors to make things better better now in terms of the warrior it's tough it is tough it's no doubt about it but i have done it before the the two classes i or three classes i capped in classic were the warrior the priest and the rogue those are the ones that i capped in classic i had them at level 60 um but the warrior is tough so if you're getting into this and you're thinking i'm gonna go warrior particularly if you know already as many people do that at end game with very good gear warriors destroy they're absolute crushers of other players in pvp and in pve warriors are very very dominant but getting there that's the tough bit can you get there now it's tough but it's relatively interesting it's not as slow as other things and i think that's important if you do pull two mobs that are of your same item level or maybe slightly higher so if you're like level 17 and you get two 18 mobs you are likely to die that is it's very difficult to get away your best you've got is to like hamstring and kind of run away slow them down and run away and hope for the best and you can do that in many scenarios but be prepared even if things go well that your combat is going to be stopped regularly to eat and bandage and keep going that way it's a very stop start process and that will continue pretty much throughout the entire game i remember it happening all the way up and in fact the last two levels i needed to get from 58 to 60 i just had to grind mobs i'd run dry of quests that was just the nature of the beast and then i went on to do my usual thing that was that's how it goes so be prepared if you are going to go with the warrior it's going to be tough but there is an immense payoff at the end so that's something you want to bear in mind uh the shaman is something that was heavily requested now the shaman i was actually playing it incorrectly so we had a lot of guys who are more familiar with classic uh and less looking back and trying to remember and also trying to apply what you've learned in say bfa or legion or kata or whatever as to how a shaman plays that's not how they played originally in fact they were designed as healers really which meant damage dealing in particular wasn't a big focus of the shaman it just wasn't the way it went we did start seeing some dps shamans popping up in nax ramus gear there was definitely enhancement shamans elemental not particularly until the burning crusade uh but getting off the bat i was playing this wrong uh at the start and then we had a number of shamans come to me and say it's actually better if you do this we've worked this out over the years that it's better to play this way uh which was using heavy amounts of earth shock and melee essentially earth shocking and melee and searing totem things like that and i have to say really picked up the pace 
heavily picked up the pace and was actually quite happy to level this this wasn't anywhere near as bad as i thought it was going to be uh, and actually turned into a relatively fun experience considering you still have things like purge not very re relevant in the early levels but does become relevant later if you're a good player and access to so many tools in the toolkit this is why shamans are generally great and have been great over the course of wow's history as support roles because they were designed as support roles it's not something that's a feature of the game right now but the support role is important it's something i really want to see back in modern day wow is this the idea of a class that's not the best damage not the best healing but actually has a heavy toolkit to provide various things from stone stone skin totem stone claw totem strength of earth totem wind fury totem tranquil air totem mana spring totem poison cleansing totem they have all these tools they have more spells in the spell bar than literally any other class i think even at level 15 and that allows them to manipulate and change things. And when we get into some dungeons, because unfortunately dungeons are not available in the WoW Classic demo, uh, which is a real criminal shame. And I understand why they did that, because they didn't want people trying to run dungeons at BlizzCon more than anything. Um, but it is a shame we didn't get them after BlizzCon finished, so we could have done maybe Dead Mines or maybe have done some Wailing Caverns. But Shamans are really great for that. And for those players out there, and I know you exist, who just don't, I don't, I don't have that competitive side to you. You want to play well. There's nothing wrong with playing well, but you don't have the competitive side in you to be like, I need to like be a bit of a scumbag in order to make my DPS better or all these kind of things. Or I want to snipe my other healers. You're not interested in being top of the healing meters or top of the damage meters. That's not what's a part of you. What you do want to do though is support your friends and push them towards getting those rankings, right? Uh, shamans are fantastic for that. And the leveling experience wasn't that terrible at all. Uh, the clear winner for me though, and I was surprised with this, I didn't remember it being so good, uh, was actually the rogue. Now, the rogues are likely, again, to be a majority of players uh, when the classic does roll around. Why? They do tremendous damage at endgame. They are superb in PvP. There is no doubt about it. They are, frankly, just broken in PvP by people who know how to play them and use their tools effectively. And even before you get cheap shot and kidney shot, which are quite late in the game, it's like 20 and 30, I think, before you get cheap shot and kidney shot, the rogue just was unstoppable really unstoppable like zero downtime just rocking around mob to mob and one thing i forgot happened is because you are so slow in stealth you are extremely slow and the aggro range of the mobs is very large is that you actually regen so much of your hp while you're actually moving from mob to mob that your downtime with eating and bandaging is actually very slow uh, very low so you can keep going and going and going. And a big part about keeping you interested through this leveling grind is that ability to just keep going. Because if you have to keep stopping and eating, it takes you out of it. That's what's going to get you checking other websites. That's what's going to check you checking your tunes, things like that. Uh, so I was... The Rogue is a top shelf pick. It really is a top shelf pick. And it only gets better. That's the thing with the Rogues. It only gets better. You are, you are relatively weak once you start getting hammered. But you have these massive cooldowns, and they are massive cooldowns. It's very strange to see Sprint as a five-minute cooldown, and Evasion as a five-minute cooldown. But you have all these utilities to get you out of bad scenarios quickly. You can sprint away, you will eventually be able to vanish. Things like that. Poison's going to open up. There are also going to be lockboxes to get more poisons. Got to be one of my best picks if you're looking, if you're unsure or you're worried about the grind. The Rogue has got to be my top pick. It really does. Uh, on the other side of the coin, though, the Mage. Oh, man. I remember distinctly going to my brother's house, who uh, I, I took a break during Classic because I didn't really get into it at the start, uh, and he was still playing it, and coming and watching my brother play, and just watching him do a couple of things, I think he was in Stone Town Mountains, if I remember looking at his screen, and he was doing a couple of things, and he was sit down, he was eating and drinking, and I remember thinking, oh, I didn't know you could eat and drink at the same time, it was a very eye-opening experience for me to see that, and then him explaining to me that he thought the mage was overpowered, because you could eat and drink at the same time, and not only that, you could conjure your own, which meant you didn't have to buy them, which obviously most of the, uh, every other class has to go and buy their food, or hope for drops, or things like that. The problem is here is you are extremely limited uh, with wanding and just generally nuking down and then you have the stop. It's a complete opposite of the rogue where you have to stop, you've got to get your mana back, then you kind of blow something up, then you got to get your mana back. Once again though, like the warrior, they do pay off later. Mages become very, very powerful later on and are some of the most useful specs you can get. Not only for the fact that they get great AoE when they unlock it, you can AoE grind on a mage, which I think is worth mentioning because as I said, a lot of classics about grinding mobs. 
uh, a well-played mage can kite and aoe down a huge amount of mobs particularly by the time it gets like a rathi uh places like that you're going to be able to group up big clusters of mobs keep them slowed and aoe grind them down making your level experience that much better but then you are going to have this stop period where you need to refresh retool get your resources back then get back into it again and do the same again so there's there's definitely tough moments but it is one of the slower ones in my opinion it's, it's pretty slow to get this thing going um the <laughs> before i get to the actual worst of the worst i want to talk about another one that's up there with the rogue which is the hunter the hunter is a machine in classic it's actually broken uh in my opinion it's actually goddamn broken just how efficient this thing is out in the open world i mean the hunter has always been a staple of people doing iron man challenges doing all the things where you need to be the absolute solo machine out in the open world where you need to stay alive and keep going and have ludicrously low chance at death and the hunter really shines in classic like comparative to everything else pretty much like the rogue has this continuously going and going and going feel of it where you're not having to stop it stop and eat and things like that whereas it's still relatively slow because you're going to go off to stealth and that is extremely slow it slows your actual movement speed down pretty tremendously and then getting back into it then re-stealthing moving to the next mob and so on and so forth the hunter has none of that it's just go 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 all the time especially if you're uh, a player who has learned to handle a pet in terms of you don't let your pet attack after you've attacked so it's not tied to i attack a thing and then my pet will automatically go if you're capable of sending your pet out at the right time so you actually micromanage your pet and say right pet go i'm doing something else then you join in you have your pet just going around from mob to mob to mob just grabbing mobs you can tag them you can do a bit of extra dps to them but then while that's doing that you can be skinning you can be looting you can be doing other things and then continuously keeping going heal your pet up continue the process once again manage your mana so you don't actually have to stop and drink you can just continuously like attack you can do some slower attacks but while the time you're gaining and gaining and gaining certainly i would say this is the fastest unquestionably the fastest class to get to level 60 one thing that is definitely worth mentioning though is the dead zone does return so if you're not sure what the dead zone is there is a minimum range you need to be at before you can use ranged attacks your pets don't taunt okay this was something pretty people were pretty stringent about is about understanding that they don't taunt they kind of try and pull the mobs towards them but they don't really taunt they build like threat and if you over aggro them and mobs start chasing you uh you can gauge this dead zone where you can't use any of your ranged abilities which is when you need to get used to using your melee abilities uh which is something you don't really have to do in bfa unless you're playing survival uh which is you're gonna have to be wing clipping you're gonna have to be raptor striking you're gonna have to be trying to, to slow them up with wing clip try and get some range and then mixing things like concussive shot in order to keep the mobs slowed if they're chasing you around but on, that's like a rarity a super rarity if you're looking for the smoothest safest solo experience in classic it's got to be the hunter it has to be does it have the payoff at the end though like the rogues do no it doesn't there are very powerful hunters their damage is good it's very very good especially if played right the play style i don't particularly like which is kind of uh, what they called aim shot weaving in between auto shots of the hunter kind of tedious and kind of boring honestly uh, in my opinion all subjective but i find hunter dps at level 60 to be particularly dull and i also not looking forward to my bow breaking when doing the ferrying because i had a brain fart for a moment uh similarly though was the warlock uh the warlock's another solid choice a really solid choice the warlock is a solid choice it starts a bit rough because um you are responsible you do have a void walker tank right so your void walker can go out similar to the hunter you can control your void walker you can send him on his way and then you can go about doing damage and you have a, a huge variety of ways of doing damage putting lots of dots on putting a couple of dots on using more shadow bolts and then draining the soul of the target to get soul shards but you don't always want to do that because soul shards like it or not they do go into your inventory and your inventory fills up pretty goddamn quick so you don't always want soul shards i did end up deleting soul shards because i simply had too many uh but i didn't want to cast a shadow ball either but i want to do some damage so then you can drain life to get some hp back but it's not particularly good it gives you like 10 a tick which is even at level like 16 it's not particularly great amount but on top of that it isn't a go 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 but you will hit the 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 pacing is different than the mage the mage has to like eat and drink like every three mobs a warlock could do five or six so it's like a, you know it's half as much that's a big deal it adds up relatively quickly uh, as to when you can actually 
you have to eat up and refresh. And it does get better later on because Warlocks tend to stack a lot of stamina so they can life tap more with the talent improved life tap so they get a lot more mana back. So they have huge HP pools. They're not really taking damage because their Voidwalker is allowing you to be smoother and smoother and smoother as you go on. But one note I want to put here is the Warlocks have some very cool stuff waiting for them at end games. Yes, they tend to be cursed bitches, which means you can't use all of your abilities. The debuff limit will be set so Warlocks can use their abilities more often in raids which is nice but they also have things like the dreadsteep mound quest which is super fun to do people will enjoy doing that with you summoning your demons and actually getting your demons the demonic quest lines so in if you've played uh since i i want to say cataclysm i could be wrong here uh then you've just got your demons by leveling up they just appear in your spell book that's not how it used to work getting your demons was a big part of being a warlock you had a quest chain to do to get your Voidwalker, to get your Succubus. You had to go on these journeys in order to get them, and then they were tied to you. You had to get your Succubus out of the nether. You had to go and do these. And later on, you will also get the quest. Uh, you'll have to go down and do outdoor quest chains to get the Infernal, for example. It's something you have to go and find. And similarly with the Doom Guard, doing the Doom Guard quest is something extra that you'll have to do. You're not going to get it from the Talent Tree Trainer. You're not going to visit this guy and he's going to say, hey, now you should go and get a Doom Guard. You have to go out and get it done by doing some difficult content in order to be able to summon a Doom Guard, which ultimately, if you're not familiar with this in Classic, uh, when you summon a Doom Guard, it can kill one of your party members. Uh, in fact, it does. I believe it kills one of your party members every time you do it, which is really fun. <laughs> it's really fun. Let's go to the worst of the worst. These are... I, 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 God bless you guys who are going to play this because I want you guys in my raid, but good God, if you can get past this leveling experience, whoo, baby. Uh, the next to worst for me was the Druid. Oh, this was painful, man. This was painful. But once again, it does get better when you get cat farm later on. I, I leveled a Druid to about 40 before I gave it up back in the day. Uh, it does get better, but I don't think the end game experience pays off particularly well either. So it's kind of like, ugh, it depends on your style and personality. Because I know, and I want to say, be really clear, I know some of you love certain specs and classes and you can't wait to play them. That's fine. Uh, I'm, I'm talking more general terms for most people from my experience, all right? So it's nothing personal, right? Don't rage at me. Uh, the Druid is just horrendous, though. So <laughs> you get bear form. Uh, I I'm not sure what bear form is. It's like 10 or 11 you get bear form. You're not going to get cat form to level 20. Um, and before that, oh baby, this is something else. So you're basically... The, one of the bigger issues with it, I'll be totally honest with you, is that changing forms is so expensive on mana. It's really expensive. And that means you can only shift a couple of times before you're just oom and you'll end up meleeing sometimes. And it's just the worst. Uh, so the alternative to that is basically like you can stick in bear form uh, and relax for a bit and just kind of mooch around. But even then, you only really have access to maul for a while, which was painful to say the least. But it does get better. It gets a little it gets a little nicer as you go on. You start getting some more talents to flesh it out. And then you will become sort of like a almost rogue with your cat and it'll, it will improve is all i'll say but again this video is more aimed at people getting past this like level 20 hump which you will hit where your classes can be very very crappy uh that's why i'm targeting this so it's it, it's it doesn't matter if it gets better if people can't reach that point that's my general goal here the priest i was surprised by this one it's, it's not great it's not great i'm gonna be honest it was my first capped character in classic and i remember not particularly enjoying it, but I did play with my friends and did a lot of dungeons. I leveled as holy. I, I, that was how I did it. I did it as a holy priest. I smited my way all the way there, and I was dreading going back into this. It's not great, but it's not the worst either, with a lot of people um, definitely getting very defensive about it when I was playing it. Uh, you've got to do a lot of wanding. Remember, like, classic is about pre preserving the flow. So that means that you don't want to expend all your mana every time you pull like every time you do a, a mob you don't want to blow every cooldown in fact there's often times you hold back on spells purely so that you can keep going later on and sort of drag it out but wanding is very effective it's a very effective way to play in terms of uh, classic it seems ridiculous now in bfa terms but wanding and taking talents that boost that wand damage are actually super useful they're very, very useful. And therefore, the priest is going to be a toughie. <laughs> it's going to be a toughie, uh, but which is 
does pay off later on. They are one of the strongest healers in the game, if not the strongest in the eyes of many, once they get up there. Shadow has a place, particularly on short fight Shadow, and in PvP as well, Shadow is actually very strong. And Shadow on fights that don't go on too long, because the problem is, of course, they run out of mana. Uh, that's generally been the issue with Shadow when you're doing progress and you're not overgearing and crushing mobs, and it may be different it may may be different but compared to the other things there is a lot of stop start here there's no getting away from it there is a lot of stop start people will consider you purely a healer for the longest time that stigma will exist but in terms of is it the worst i've got a better one for you the paladin <laughs> it brings us to the last the paladin Oh, God bless you guys, because I want Paladins. I'm going Alliance in Classic, and I want Paladins. I do. I do want you guys. And God bless you if you can level this thing, because it's bad. It's so bad, and it doesn't get much better uh, until you get, like, uh, the Plague Lands, where you can use Exorcism and stuff like that, because they are Holy Warriors, and they do extra bonus damage to things of the undead and all that kind of stuff. But good Christ, this thing is so slow and so boring. And it basically this involves around putting a seal on, which is a self buff, and then you have a choice to either just auto attack with that seal on because it will give you some sort of bonus uh, while it has it on. So, for example, one seal might uh, improve your holy damage, but it lowers your melee damage and it slows your attack speed, so you <laughs> you're attacking even slower. Another one might uh, do bonus holy damage, so you can. But if you judge the first one, it, the, the target will take bonus holy damage so what you can do is debuff the target so you judge that seal onto it then you use a different seal which would be righteousness in order to do bonus damage there what you'll notice is that even though you're barely doing anything and i mean that sincerely you're barely doing anything you're basically auto attacking uh is that you start still running out of mana and if you need to heal yourself because you do have a heal uh, then that's going to drain all your mana you still end up stopping and starting anyway it's a slog boys it is a slog the bonus of it is, is you really enjoy being the best healer in the game, you're going to want a paladin. Priests are way up there, but I would take paladins. Uh, they are so efficient. They are so, so efficient once they get to endgame. And they can do very, very cool stuff. The videos of Zalgradis in Classic uh, are infamous because of the utility they have with mixing in protection talents and retribution talents and going all the way down that road, is you can have a lot of fun with a paladin. And they can do things other classes can't. They have so much self-healing, so much self-mana regen when in combat, that they can do things other classes can't. They can pull instances on their own and AoE them down. It'll take forever, but you won't die, and you can do all this cool solo content that hunters can't do, no one else can do it, paladins can't. Paladins can, so there are definite bonuses, and the buffs and support they bring to the raid are incredible. They are incredible. Blessing of Salvation, Blessing of Wisdom, all this stuff is super cool. Super cool, but my heart goes out to you guys. <laughs> you have my full support. You really do, because I know I couldn't do it. I could not make it happen, but for those of you who can, you holy warriors of the light, God bless you and God speed, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, we'll look out for any more classic information that is coming. But for me, it is the weekend and de uh, classic demo is closing soon. Uh, this is the last of my classic coverage for now. But I hope that points you in the right direction. Basically, this is just about getting over that level 20 hump. That's it. Because once you're in the game and you're invested, then yeah, then you're going to be pretty okay because you're going to be exploring different zones and you're also going to be starting. This is when you kind of move into the areas of PvP as well, uh, should you choose to do that. I mean, there probably will be a PvE realm, but this is where you're going to be moving into that kind of environment where the world starts to open up a bit more and your classes start to grow in a direction you want them to go in via your talent specializations. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Bye-bye.